Hello everyone, welcome into today's word. I'm gonna be talking to you today about the timing of God. I'm gonna say a prayer for you before I get into the message for today, but there was a reason the Lord put this on my heart to share with you all because there are many of you who are constantly going before the Lord or you're asking other ministers or you're just saying in your prayer time, Lord, when is it gonna happen? Or when am I gonna see this come to pass? Or when is, some of you aren't even asking God when it's gonna happen, but you're just asking God, when is something gonna end? When is this cycle going to end in your life? When is this cycle of generational curse gonna end in your life? When is the cycle of generational poverty gonna end in your life? When is this cycle of sickness gonna end in your life? I don't know what that is, but that's between you and the Lord. The Lord knows what you've been asking him for. The Lord knows what you have been going to others about for prayer. The Lord knows what is on your heart and he cares about what's on your heart. But God has a certain way that he does things according to the timing that exists in the earth. Now, hear me when I say this. God exists outside of space and time. He's not a part of time. He did step into time once as man, as Jesus, to die for us on the cross. But he's out. He's ultimately outside of space and time. But there is a such thing as the timing of God, and we're going to talk about that today. It's important that you understand what that is and what exactly that looks like and how it applies to your life because you need to know what God's timetable looks like. You need to know how God looks at time so that you can know what he has for your life, when it's going to happen, when the season is going to end, and how God uses time to bring about things in your life and to end things in your life. We're going to get into that today. But I want to say a prayer for you really quick before I share the message of the Lord with you. Lord, we all humbly come together before you. We bow ourselves low at your feet. They didn't come to hear the words of Shannon, but they come to hear the words of you, Lord God, the words of your spirit. So I ask that you do just that minister to them, minister to their hearts and their minds, what thus says the spirit of God, not by my own might or power, but by your spirit, Lord God, the word should go forth and it should penetrate their heart and transform them because that is what your word does. It transforms us by the renewing of our mind. It it makes it so that we're no longer conformed to the image of this world or the things of this world, but we're, but we're being more and more transformed into the image of your son, Lord God, so that when we go out into the world, we don't reflect what it is that the world has put on us or who it is that the world says that we are, but we reflect the glory of God. Your word says that we are all beholding like in a glass. It's the mirror, the glory of God, which means that we show back the world. We reflect back to the world, the glory of God. So I ask that you use this message to plant seeds to, that produce fruit, to do just that, to, to yield to good fruit in their life that points back to you, Lord God, that reflects you. We understand that you have a very specific way that you look at time and that you move throughout time, especially when it comes to us. We know that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And because we're in this world, we're in the time, Lord God, we're in time. But when we pray, our prayers go into a realm that is not bound by space or time. So we say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is already done in heaven and make it happen speedily, Lord God, because your word is not bound by space or time, neither is your kingdom. And so we know that you are a God who can do anything above anything we can ever ask or think or imagine. Things that aren't even bound by space or time, Lord God. He said, whatever we ask in the name of your Father, and whatever we ask the Father in your name, that it should be done. And so we ask that you will end cycles in our life, cause this word to penetrate the hearts of those who are underneath the sound of my voice to end things in their life that they're wanting to end and to start things in their life that they've been waiting to start. We thank you for the seed that this word is. We thank you for what it's gonna start in their life. We thank you for what it's gonna end in their life. In advance, Lord God, we give you all the glory, all the thanks in the name of Jesus, amen. So I'm glad that you stayed for that prayer because I firmly believe, I know that if you're here and you're listening to me and you're under the sound of my voice, that this word is going to end certain things in your life and it's going to start a cycle of perpetual increase in your life, perpetual health, right? Sending people into your life. I'm talking about divine connections, uh, people that the Lord has ordained to come into your life at a set time. Come on, somebody. We're going to talk about that today. But first, what I want you to understand is that God is outside of space and time. 
He's outside of space and time, but he does control time. And we're going to talk about that. He can speed up time. He can redeem it. He can set things in motion by a set time, by a certain time marker, and end things by a certain time marker. He decides when a, start, when a cycle starts and he decides when a cycle ends. And just like he can end a cycle of poverty, sickness, or generational curses, he can start a cycle of perpetual increase, health, and generational blessings. Just like God can end cycles, he can start them. So there are three ways that God moves through time. Three main ways, and you can write this down. God redeems time. This is how God uses time. This is, this is when he divinely intervenes. Come on, somebody. There's Kairos timing. That's not one of them, but that's just a side note. And we're going to talk about that. Kairos timing is actually is actually a part of God's timetable. It's a set time that, that's underneath the umbrella of God's set timing, Kairos timing. We're going to talk about that. But the first one is, and this is how God moves through time in the earth. Remember, he's outside of space and time, but he literally steps on the, con I'm imagining like a conveyor belt and there's time markers on the conveyor belt and the belt is constantly rolling. When it rolls out, that's when Jesus shows up to pull in the bride of Christ. That's going to be a glorious church. Come on, somebody. But on that conveyor belt, there's certain time markers of things that are supposed to happen in your life. Yes, your life specifically. And it's like that for each of us. But there's three ways that God will divinely intervene into time here in the earth. He'll come from outside of space and time, step in by his spirit and intervene with what's going on in your life. He won't let that thing continue. There's, come on, somebody, I feel the anointing of God on this. He will not let that thing continue in your life. He says when the enemy comes in like a flood, he'll raise up a standard against him. There's, there's a time where... God will step in within time and say, enough is enough. He'll raise up a standard against the enemy when he comes in like a flood against you. I'm talking about when you can no longer stand any more warfare, when you can no longer stand, stand the attack of the enemy. God will come in, put his foot down on and, and mark the time and say, this is where it ends. This is where it stops. This is where the generational curse stops. It'll no longer travel. This is where the sickness stops. This is where it stops. He raises up a standard against the enemy. A standard is literally putting, you know, imagine on a battlefield, putting down the standard and it's where the, it's where the battle stops. It's where it ends. He'll come in and he'll do that for you. There are times where God will divinely intervene with time here in the earth and say, enough is enough. This is where it stops right here. He'll do the same thing to start something in your life. He'll say, this person, can, you can no longer go on like this. I need to set off a cycle of increase. I need to set off a cycle of health. It can't go on to your children. It can't go on to your grandchildren. It can, it can no longer continue on in your life can no longer continue on in your life. There are three ways that he does this. He divinely intervenes within time here in the earth. And you could write this down. The first way is he redeems the time. The second way is he changes the times and the seasons. The third way is, is the Kairos time. It's, it's God's set time. It's his timetable. It's where literally he will, he'll have certain time markers to where things are supposed to happen and things are supposed to end. And we're going to talk about that, what that looks more like. So God redeeming the time, we learn about this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. I'm going to read it. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is or understanding what the will of the Lord is so really what it's telling us is that just by being wise you can redeem the time because the days are evil to be foolish is to waste time doing pointless things there are many other things that you could be doing right now you could be scrolling social media you could be watching TV you could be shopping online you could be in an argument with someone you could be going back and forth with someone about something that is just not as Pointless, right? Not as important as this. There are many things that people do these days to just pass time and waste time. And it's purposeless. It doesn't really get them anywhere. But you are here. You. 
you are here and you're listening to this and it's very wise of you to do that. Many of you have actually rooted yourself here. You rooted yourself under this ministry and you don't miss a message. You don't, you're on the email list. You don't miss an email. You're sowing here. You're tithing here. You've literally rooted yourself underneath the anointing of this ministry. And it is a teacher anointing here, which is an anointing for increase. That's literally what the word teacher means. It means to increase in knowledge, increase in stature, increase in wisdom. It is by those things which are literally given to you as an inheritance from God that you're able to have everything that you need here, all of the resources you need here on earth, on earth to do what it is that God has put you here for. I'm telling you, you cannot sit underneath this ministry and not grow as a person, not be transformed from the inside and I'm telling you, as a result of that, it begins to trickle outward. Just hold the faith, you will see it. I'm gonna tell you something, and this is not this is not even in my notes, but I remember a point in my life where I would say I was in a wilderness season and I did not have many res I didn't have much resources, I didn't really have much anything. I was struggling to pay my bills. But then God began to speak to me about sewing, and I'm telling you that I I I did that. I did that. I was obedient to God. And there was a time, I'm telling you, I won't say how much, but I was not able to sow that much. But as God increased me, I was able to sow more and I began to work his principles and I began to work for me to bring much resources in my, into my life. And now I'm a resource to others. Maybe we're poor into other people. But what I want to tell you is that there was a time in my life where I, I was in what I would say a wilderness, wilderness season. And I did not have many resources, but the Lord was working in me on the inside. He was transforming me on the inside out. And he'll do that. He'll transform you first before he sends things into your life. He's not gonna bring you into a promised land. He's not gonna really give you much of anything. He'll come and he'll provide for you. He'll make sure that you have basic provision, right? A roof over your head, clothes on your back, food to eat. But to actually prosper you, that won't really happen until you are transformed from the inside out. Because the Lord, it's not his will for him to enable you or turn you into a, the prodigal son like that parable. But he wants you to be in a place to where when he gives you the blessings of his kingdom, like he's really prospering you according to his will and his word, that you're in a place mentally, emotionally, physically and spiritually to where you don't have people leeching on you this is a word all by itself i could i could teach and preach a word all by itself on that you don't have people leeching on you but you give them a place of wisdom right you you know how to manage it well you know how to be a good steward over the resources that he's given you he'll make sure that you're in that place mentally physically emotionally and spiritually but before then you're going to be in a wilderness season you're gonna, and see it as a season of transition. For those of you who I'm speaking to right now, I encourage you to get in journey through the wilderness. And if you cannot, at minimum, get into the promised land mentorship and stay there, root yourself there. Root yourself there. I promise you that those who have completed a year, sometimes before they even get out of the full year, they're sitting in testimonies of what the Lord has done in their life. There's actually someone recently who I was notified just mentioned that they received the they're four weeks out from completing the year of the mentorship they received a large inheritance unexpectedly exactly at the time they needed it why did that happen because every morning i pray the will of god over everyone who is inside of the mentorship this is my prayer i say lord will you honor their faithfulness and obedience to to join by prospering them in the area of their finances, their health, and their relationships. And I guarantee you that it happens for every single person who has rooted themselves in the mentorship and they have stayed there. But I'm gonna tell you something else. Even if the Lord hasn't called you to join mentorship or any of, or journey through the wilderness, if he has called you to be seated under this ministry and you're here, you're sowing here, you're listening to these messages, you're, you're applying it through faith, continue to hold the faith. I'm telling you that you'll begin to see it start on the inside first. Your The way that you think will begin to change and then the way that you live your life will begin to change and then you'll begin to see things shifting in your life on the outside that aligns with the word of God. Will it take time? Absolutely. Will it happen? Yes. God's word never returns back to him void. That wasn't even in my notes, but I know it was for somebody. I know it was for somebody. 
let me know in the comments below if, if that was for you. Actually share it if that was for you because I know that it's going to be for somebody else that you know. But Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 tells us that God will redeem the time for you just by you being wise, which means that all of those years that you consider lost, all those years where maybe you were just roaming, not really knowing who you were, maybe you weren't even a believer, right? Maybe you weren't even, you didn't even have a relationship with God. Maybe you were trapped in bondage, whatever it was, ignorance, whatever it was, all of those years where you weren't really walking with the Lord, where you, you know you weren't being wise, you know you weren't being a good steward over what it was that God has given you. You know that you just could have been doing better and you consider those years lost, don't. Don't consider those years lost. The enemy will want you to. He'll want you to think that you lost all that time. The devil is a liar. God says he redeems the time just by you being wise, which means that as you walk in wisdom, God will set it in a way to where no time was lost. Come on, somebody. He'll use Romans chapter 8, verse 28, where it says, um, God will work all things according to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So when you walk in wisdom and you step into the purpose that God has put you here on this earth for, that means a kingdom ambassador. God will work all things according to, for good, according to um, his will for the purpose, um, work all things for the good of those who love him according to who are called according to his purpose. I, I don't have that scripture here, so I'm, I'm butchering it a little, but I encourage you to look it up. This, essentially what that really just means is that with all the time that you consider to be lost, God will take that time, come on somebody, and he'll flip it, he'll flip it. And what the enemy meant for evil, what he meant for bad, God will make it work for you. He'll make it work for you. It will become your testimony. Instead of it holding you back, it'll be the fuel that propels you forward. Come on somebody. That's a quote all by itself. You will redeem all that time just by you being wise. It is God who controls the time. It is God who controls the time. The second way that God divinely intervenes in time here in the earth is by actually changing the times and the seasons. Because there's, I'm telling you, there's that conveyor belt, conveyor belt where there's, there's set times on it where God says, okay, this is when this is when they're supposed to get married. This is when they're supposed to get that job. This is when they're supposed to graduate from college. This is when they're supposed to have that child. This is when they receive their inheritance. There's set times, come on somebody. But God can decide when that time happens. So there could be a set time saying it's supposed to happen here, but then God can speed that thing up, right? And he can decide, no, actually, it's gonna happen here. Actually, it's going to happen here. God is the one. I'm going to read to you Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. Really pay attention to this. This is powerful if you can get this. I'm actually, I am getting really excited thinking about it because this is just a testament to the wonderful God that we serve. He puts, he works things in your favor. He, I feel the anointing of God so heavy on this word. So heavy on this word. And I know that many of you are going to get this. He works things in your favor. It's fixed. It's rigged in your favor, child of God. Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that know. So God, and there it is talking about being wise again, aligning with, Ephesians 5, uh, 15 through 17, where it says he'll redeem the time just by you being wise. But he changes the time and the seasons. What this is telling us is that God decides when a leader's time is up. God decides, this includes presidents. God decides when a president's time is up. God decides when a minister's time is up. It doesn't matter who it is. God decides when someone's time is up, when your time of suffering is up when your time of being sick is up, when your time of being homeless is up, when your time of being in poverty is up, when your time of being in bondage is up, God will look at you and decide the time is up. The perpetual cycle of bondage, addiction, and poverty, and everything that does not, everything that is demonic and doesn't align with God, that time is up. 
he decides when it's up. He decides when you no longer go through that anymore. He also decides when it's your time to start. He decides when it's time to start a perpetual cycle of increase, a cycle of generational blessings, a cycle of generational help. He decides when it's your time to start. He decides when it's your time to end. He closes doors and he opens doors. And when he closes the door, no man can open it. And when he opens a door, no man can shut it. It is God who decides. It is God who changes the times and the seasons of your life. Not just, and I'm telling you, it's on a global scale. It is God who decides and he changes the times and the seasons literally of the entire earth. But then it trickles on down to even your life specifically. Whatever you have going on in your life specifically. That's how beautiful and detailed our God is. And then the third way that God divinely intervenes into, into time here on the earth is uh, the Kairos timing, the set time markers. I'm going to read to you Psalm chapter 102 verse 13. It says, you will arise and have compassion on Jerusalem, for it is time to be gracious. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. <laughs> for it is time to be gracious and show favor to her. Yes, the appointed time, the set time, the moment designated has come. So there's, a, there's an appointed time. There's a set time. There's a moment that God will designate that doesn't... <laughs> come on, somebody. There's a moment that God will designate that doesn't align with what every everything that's happening in the natural there's a moment i'm telling you things could be happening in the natural and then god will step in and put a time marker down he'll do something in that moment a set time god set time to where everything around this event everything around this event everything around this circumstance everything around this situation everything around this thing happening in your life says that it shouldn't be so but yet it is so because God has said it. God has said it so. It's a set time. It's a Kairos time. And I'm going to say right now, and I don't do this often, I'm going to say right now by the Spirit of God that that's coming for many of you. That's coming for many of you. A set time. A set time. The appointed time. The moment designated. And I'm talking about you think that those years that you spent in ignorance, you think those years that you spent um, not being a good steward over things. You think those years were spent just throwing things away, being lost. You think you've lost those years, years that people have left you, years you've spent in, in, in horrible relationships, right? Years you've spent at jobs that didn't really teach you anything. You think those years were lost? God is going to use those years. He's going to use those years and he's going to wrap it all up in a way to where it actually brings you, and only God can do this, and I'm trying to explain this in a way that he's revealing it to me. He's gonna wrap it all up in a way to where it brings you to a set time, a set time to meet a specific person. Come on, somebody. I need you to grasp this. A set time to meet a specific person, a set time to be at the right place at the right time to get that opportunity, a set time to get the healing and deliverance that you need, a set time. The world didn't see it coming. You didn't see it coming. God seen it coming. Because it was a de it was a moment designated for you to get here at this point in time. It was a moment designated for you from the beginning, from the beginning of everything, before you were even born. A set time. So understand that no matter what you see happening in your life with your natural eye and i'm going to pray for you and i'm glad that you listened to this message because i believe that this message within itself it's going to start something it's going to start something in your life it's going to close some doors and it's going to open some doors if you can receive it with your faith understand that no matter what you see with your natural eye the mighty hand of god can move over your circumstance your situation your environment your experience wherever you're at to bring that cycle to an end, which will simultaneously offset the cycle of you living in the fullness of the blessing of God. Of you living in the full, and it's gonna be perpetual. It's gonna to continue to increase from there. It's gonna to continue to increase from there. David in Psalm chapter 23 says, he will remain in the house of the Lord forever. 
forever. God prepares a table before him in the presence of his enemy. What's on that table was everything that God said you should have and it's lacking nothing. He says no good thing. The Lord says no good thing will he withhold from those who love him and walk uprightly. No good thing would be withheld, withheld from you. It's all on the table. It's all on the table that he's prepared for you. Yes, in the presence of your enemies. They will watch. They will watch. Not for you to mock them, right? Not for you to gloat. I think I'm using the right word. Um, and what they don't have, but what you have. No, but so that you could reflect the glory of God. So that the, the glory of God can be reflected back to them. In the name of Jesus. It's going to offset the cycle ending. It's going to offset simultaneously a cycle of perpetual increase. You going from glory to glory. You going, you're going up from here, not down. No more. No more years lost. In fact, those years lost, it's just going to be fuel to propel you closer and further into what God has for you. I speak this by the word of God. I speak this by the spirit of God. So I want to say a prayer for you. And we're going to petition heaven for a cycle of perpetual increase to start in your life even now. And although I do believe that it already has started, if you're listening to this. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for what you're doing. We, we thank you for doors that you've closed. We thank you for doors that you're opening now. We thank you for cycles that you've ended. We thank you for cycles that you're starting now that aligns with your word. We thank you for perpetual increase from here on out. We thank you for the set time. We thank you that your word says when the enemy comes in like a flood, you will raise up a standard against him. I see that happening even now. And I ask that you will teach your, your, uh, your children by the spirit of God to be good stewards over what begins to flow into their life. I ask that you will show them how to be, be an example of what it is to be like Jesus in the earth. I ask that you would teach them how to walk in fully their role and responsibility as a kingdom ambassador. I ask that you will begin to reveal to them more of who they are in you so that they can go to their father who is in heaven as, the, as their source and not any organization, company, or person, or people on this or in this earth, Lord God. I ask that you will begin to increase them in wisdom and stature and power and authority. And I ask that you will begin to reveal to them more and more. Give them a vision, Lord God. Give them a download straight from the third heaven into their mind of what it is that you have for them. Increase their faith so that they're able to wrap it, wrap it around that vision. Hold on to it, Lord God. So they're able to know that it's from you. So even when things and their natural are not aligning with what you've shown them, with what's in your word, that they still have that memory of what you've shown them. They still have that, that vision. They still have that download. They still have that scripture. They still have that word of what you have shown them and they hold on to it. Increase their faith, Lord God. You say in your word, no good thing will you withhold from them who walk uprightly and love you. And we know that if they're here, they're seated under this message, that that is what they are doing. That is what they are seeking. That is what they're striving for. That is what they're, they're, they're moving towards, Lord God. I thank you for sending them here. In the name of Jesus, amen. I know the Lord is going to begin to do amazing things in your life as a result of this word going forth. I want you to comment below if he already has or if this word has blessed you. I also want to open it up for you to put seed and really good ground. I was just reading. Um, gosh, I can't, you know what? I'm going, to, I'm going to take you there right now. I was in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, but I was actually in as well in the book of Matthew. Give me a moment because I feel led to take you there. <laughs> Whenever the Lord is bringing me to take you to a certain scripture, I don't ever want to short you. Give me a moment. Actually, I wrote it down here. Um, Thank you for being patient with me. Give me a quick moment. Okay. It is Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 11. It says, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. 
You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. This means that as you sow, God will give you more because he supplies seed to the sower. And there are many people, you know, and I want you to catch this revelation because I don't share this much, but when I caught this, it changed my life. And I know it's going to change your life because it's, it's nothing that I could ever come up with on my own. It's literally the word of God. There are many people who say, I don't have seeds to sow, but I'm telling you that when you begin to sow what you do have, whatever it is that you do have, God will multiply that. He will give you more seed because you have sown. He doesn't give seed so that you can sow if you aren't sowing. He gives seed to the sower. Let me know if that makes sense. It takes a sacrifice on your end. If it's not a sacrifice, then it's not acceptable to the Lord. And that's just, that's not by the mouth of Shannon, but that's by the word of God. I need you to catch that revelation. I'll, I'll share with you how I began to sew a couple years ago and how it literally broke chains of bondage off my life in a way that I could have never done on my own. I could have never done on my own. And I'm telling you that the words that I speak to you, I have to, I have to stand before the Lord and, and give an account for everything that comes out of my mouth. So it was a couple years ago, kid you not, there are times when I was only able to sew, I was sewing in $5 increments because there was a time where I did not have, I was only able to sew $5, but I was being, I'm telling you that I wanted to be, I needed deliverance at that time. I did not know it, but then later the Lord led me to getting deliverance. Some of you need deliverance. If you know that's you and you feel the spirit of God tugging on you now, I encourage you to get it. But I felt the spirit of God tugging on me so heavy, like it, it became a burden almost to where I could not not give. I could not not give. I could not not sew. So I began to sew in $5 increments. When I had it, I would sew $5. And then I would, as God began to increase me, I began to increase the amount I was selling. And then I began to sew $10 and $100 and now $1,000. And as a result of me sewing, God gives seed to the sewer. He gives, he always makes sure that I have something in my hand to sew. That's just how it works. And I, I cannot not share that with you all because I know that there are many of you who are grasp this and it's gonna, it's gonna set you free in a way that you can never, you can't even see now. You cannot even see now. And there are some people who won't receive this and it's because it, it may just not be for you right now. But for those of you who are wanting to receive it, those of you who it is for, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you open their ears, their spiritual ears, and give them understanding, Lord God. I ask that you open their eyes so that they can see all that it is that you have for them on the other side of them wanting to hold on to something that you have given them anyway. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I leave you with that opportunity. The link is down below. I also want to present you all with the opportunity to grab hold of some of the resources that are presented to you through this ministry. There's a devotional book that many people have just been receiving little, like some people have called them little gifts from God every day because they're, they're really prophetic, might I say. Um, but if you want to receive those, if you want to wake up every day and open your devotional book, I actually have it here to show you what it looks like. Um, and I've been going through it myself. Very, very beautiful. And every single, it doesn't matter what page you go to, every single page on time word. If you're wanting something like that in your life, if you're needing something like that in your life, I encourage you to grab the devotional book. Um, and if you're... You know, I was going to say something else, but I'll leave it at I'll leave it at that. There's also other things for you below, such as the mentorship journey through the wilderness, and whatever it is that the Lord is putting on your heart to grab or get into, do not hesitate on it because I'm telling you, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. I I take that and I apply it to my own life as well. When the Lord is wanting to take me somewhere, He'll always send a resource into my life. And I don't hesitate on it, I move on it. And that's how I've gotten so far in such an incredibly short period of time. And God isn't finished with me yet. And he's not finished with you yet. I speak that over you because I know it to be true. So I love you all. I'm always praying for you. And I'll talk with you all in the next message.